Lesson 10.5, Metric Measures, Compare and Convert to Each Other. We can compare and convert metric units to each other. We decide if we're converting a smaller unit to a larger unit, or a larger unit to a smaller unit. Then we convert by dividing or multiplying by the appropriate power of 10. Now, if you don't know about powers of 10, we learned about them back in video 1.4 and 1.5, and they are linked in the description. So let's do a review of the powers of 10 and exponents. The exponent, this little red number up here, tells us how many times to use the base, that would be the number 10, as a factor. If we have 10 to the 0 power, we don't have 10 as a factor at all, so we're just going to have a 1. 10 to the first power, we have 1, 10. 10 to the second power, we have two factors of 10. That's equal to 100. And 10 to the third power means we have three factors of 10. That's equal to 1,000. For powers of 10, the exponent also tells us how many zeros to write after the 1. If we have 10 to the third power, we have a 1 with three zeros. It's 1,000. 10 to the 4th power, we have a 1 with 4 zeros. We have 10,000. And it also tells us how many decimal hops we move, the, we move left for division. So if we have 2 and 7 tenths, and we have a decimal point right here, and it's divided by 10 to the 1st power, which would just be a 10, we're going to move, see the little 1 exponent? We're going to move the decimal point 1 hop to the left. So it was in between the 2 and 7, 2 and 7 tenths divided by 10 is equal to 27 hundredths because we've now moved the decimal point one hop left to the left of the 2. See? The metric system is based on place value. Each unit is related to the next largest or next smallest unit by a power of 10. So I have a copy of this on my Joanne School Facebook page in the photo section. I think it's in a folder called Metric. And here's our base unit. It's either a meter, a liter, or a gram. And then we've got these prefixes. And we divide if we want to convert up from a smaller unit to a larger unit. And we multiply if we want to convert down from a larger unit to a smaller unit. So our base units are a meter, a liter, or a gram. And the meter, that's one base unit used to measure length or distance. Liter, that's one base unit used to measure liquid volume. And gram, that's one base unit used to measure mass. Now, if you don't know the difference between weight and mass, there's a link to the video for third grade math 10.8 where we talked about the difference between weight and mass. So these base units, meter, liter, gram, are combined with prefixes. We have Kilo, which means 1,000, hecto, which means 100, deca, which means 10, deci, which means 1 tenth, centi, which means 1 hundredth, and milli, which means 1 thousandth. Their abbreviations are a combination of the prefix and the base unit. We have kilometer. The abbreviation for kilo is K, and the abbreviation for meter is M, so kilometer is KM. We have a prefix deci, the abbreviation is a D, and meter, which is an M. We have decimeter, the abbreviation is a DM. See? And scientists use the prefixes mega for millions, giga for billions, micro for millionths, and nano for billionths. And we need to learn these abbreviations. You also need to learn the prefixes. If you can memorize what these prefixes mean, it'll be very easy for you to use the metric system. We need to convert 8,000 meters to kilometers. And meter is the base unit. We can see kilo is way over here. So we're going to go from this box to this box. We're going to go 1 power of 10, 2 powers of 10, 
three powers of 10. Meters are three powers of 10 smaller than kilometers. 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer. So 8,000 meters is equal to how many kilometers? We're going from smaller to larger, so we need to divide. 8,000 meters divided by 1,000 meters in one kilometer is equal to eight kilometers. We're doing 8,000 divided by 10 to the third power, three powers, see? So we're gonna move the decimal three hops, one, two, three. That's gonna move it from back here to in between the eight and this zero, which really means it's just eight ones. To change meters to decameters, meters to decameters, we divide by 10. And then to change decameters to hectometers, we divide by 10 again. And finally, to change hectometers to kilometers, we divide by 10. So we did divide by 10, divide by 10, or divide by 10, and we did it three times. And we can divide by 1,000 because 10 times 10 times 10 is equal to 1,000. We can divide by 1,000 to perform the conversion in one step. So for those of you in the US, or those of you who use customary measures and are not used to metric units, one millimeter is about the size of a pencil tip, and one centimeter is about the width of a finger, one decimeter is about the width of a hand with the thumb out, one meter is about the width of a door, and one kilometer is about how far you can walk in 10 minutes. For metric units of liquid volume, an eyedropper holds about one milliliter of liquid, and you've probably seen a liter of soda pop. A one dollar bill has the metric mass of about one gram, and a baseball bat has the metric mass of about one kilogram. We can use a diagram to convert two and five tenths decimeters to millimeters. And I have copies of this diagram in the photo section of Joanne School Facebook page in that metric folder. Now we write two and five tenths decimeters. Since the unit is decimeters, we place the decimal point to show the decimeters as the unit. The two is placed as decimeters, so the five is placed as centimeters and the decimal point is between them. Now we cross out the decimal point and place it to show millimeters as the unit. So now this is going to be the unit because that's what we're switching it to, we're converting it to. So it's gonna go to the right down here for the millimeters and the two and the five stay in the same place, and we insert a zero as a placeholder if we need to. That means two and five tenths decimeters is equal to 250 millimeters. If this was 25 decimeters, then we would have the decimal point over here, wouldn't we? We'd have the 25, and then the decimal point would be right here, okay? And then, we would move the decimal point to the place value, okay, for that unit. Here we have two problems. We're going to convert 152 milligrams to centigrams, decigrams, and grams. Then we're going to convert 2 and 3 tenths hectoliters to deciliters, liters, and deciliters. So converting 152 milligrams to centigrams, here's milli, so for milligram to centigram, we're moving over one box and we're going from smaller to larger, so we need to divide because milligrams are smaller and we're going larger. So we're gonna do 152 milligrams divided by 10, because that's one power of 10, that's one box that we're moving over. And that would be equal to 
15 and 2 tenths centigrams. We're dividing it by 10. So the decimal point is going to move one hop to the left. For 152, the decimal point's right here. We're going to move it one hop to the left. It's going to be in between the 5 and 2. We have 15 and 2 tenths. To convert it to decigrams, we divide by 100 because we're going from milli to deci, so that's two powers of 10, so that would be 100. That decimal point, because we're dividing it by 100, is going to go two hops. One, two. So it's going to go in between the 1 and the 5. That means we're going to have 1 and 52 hundredths decigrams. To convert it to grams, we're going from milli, 1, 2, 3 powers of 10. So we divide by 1,000, and because it's 3 powers of 10, and we have three zeros here, we're going to go 1, 2, 3. That decimal point is going to go right here by the 1, just to the left of the 1. And we can put a 0 in the 1's place. We have 0 0.152 as 152 thousandths grams. To convert 2 and 3 tenths hectoliters to decaliters, liters and deciliters, we need to multiply because hecto, hectoliters, are larger than deca, they're larger than liters, and they're larger than deciliters. And 2 and 3 tenths hectoliters times 10, that means our decimal point is going to hop to the right. So it's right here, it's going to hop to the right one place because we're multiplying it by 10. It's equal to 23 decaliters. To change it to liters, we're going from hectoliters, 1, 2, to liters. That's 2 powers of 10, so that's 100. That's 10 times 10. That means our decimal point is going to move 2 hops to the right. So it's going to go from here to on the other side of the 3, and then one more. That means we're going to have to put a 0 here as a placeholder. It's equal to 230 liters. To turn it into deciliters, we're going to go 1, 2, 3 powers of 10. So that's 1,000, 10 times 10 times 10. We're going to move that decimal point 3 hops. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3. That means, let's remove this. That means we'd have to put a 0 here and a 0 here as placeholders because now our decimal point's here. That means we have 2,300 deciliters. So remember, when you're dividing by the powers of 10, you're going to move the decimal point to the left. And when you're multiplying, you're going to move it towards the right. We need to compare these units and write less than, greater than, or equal to in the circle. And we think which unit is smaller, which unit is larger. So we're comparing liters to decaliters. Here we're comparing kilometers to meters. We look at liters, that's the base unit, and decaliters is larger. So we're going to need to divide. We do 24 liters divided by 10, because it's 1 power of 10. That means we're going to move the decimal point one hop to the left. For 24, the decimal point is right here. And if we move it one hop to the left, it's going to go here. That means it's going to be 2 and 4 tenths decaliters. That means these are equal. we're comparing 7 and 6 tenths kilometers to 76 meters. Here's kilometers, here's meters. Look at how much larger kilometers are than meters. We can do 7 and 6 tenths kilometers times 1,000 to find how many meters it would be equal to. We have our decimal point in between the 7 and the 6 right here. We're multiplying it by 1,000. So our decimal point is going to move to the right three hops. We have three zeros, three powers of 10. 
So it goes from here, one, two, three places. We're going to have to put a zero here and a zero here as placeholders, which means 7 and 6 tenths kilometers is equal to 7,600 meters. So which one's greater? Well, this one is. This is only 76 meters, and this one's equal to 7,600 meters. So again, these are going to be on the Joanne School Facebook page in the photo section in the metric folder. To help you, you can print them and copy them. So be very careful as you're making the metric conversions. You want to make sure that when you're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit that you divide to convert up, and when you're going from a larger unit to a smaller unit that you want to multiply to convert down. For our next lesson, 10.6, we're going to be doing some word problem solving with customary and metric conversions. We're going to be making a table to solve. I hope I'll see you there, and have a wonderful day. Bye.